Curanderismo, as I said, it comes from the word curar, which means to heal. And, and, and going back to the history, in 1519, the Spaniards came to the New World. Um, they encountered Native Americans. The Spaniards brought their own uh, traditions that they borrowed from the Moors or from Northern Africa. They were in Spain some 800, 900 years. We don't even know how long they were there, but they were there many years. And so they learned the usage of plants to heal, some rituals. They came to the New World. They realized that the natives here, especially the Aztecs, had a vast knowledge of traditional medicine using plants. And so it merged together. As a consequence, the, the healer uh, came about, and as we know now, the curandero, or the curandera, that was a holistic healer healing mind, body, and spirit. Uh, there were no counselors, so that they were very few ministers and priests, and no physicians, so they played all those roles. It's holistic approach to healing. I interpret the curandero. Before the curandero came, they were just natives here doing yeah. their own healing. But now there's this blend of different modalities of healing, um, a little bit of a Judeo-Christian, a little bit of um, uh, the, the Greek humoral system of hot and cold, uh, a Native American blend, um, uh, Arabic blend. Uh, it, it's a blend of many cultures and, and, and keeps changing uh, throughout the years. They may have a different names, they may be called shamans, mm -hmm. but it's basically the same concept, or curanderos or shamans. Um, and in fact, there's a group that, that I trained with, in, or when I first started learning more about the topic, and they call themselves materias, mediums, because they channel spirits when they did their healings. Uh, the groups still exist and growing. Uh, they're called fidencistas, after the famous Nino Fidencio, the curandero, who died in 1938. Yes, and, and it's still changing. Yeah, Iraq medicine now is part of it, uh, Chinese medicine is part of it, and it, it's wonderful because you have all these cultures that are coming together, and people choose whatever modality is best for them. There's an herb store in just about every medium-sized, small-sized community in Mexico. Uh, Mexico City has a, a Mercado Sonora, a huge marketplace that you have people in, in suits uh, asking for, for a curandero, an herbalist. Uh, so there's, it's still alive and well. And it seems to be gaining more popularity in the U.S. now with a large number of Hispanic immigrants that have migrated to the U.S., you're beginning to see more, we call them yerberias or botanicas. Botanicas, see, in, uh, in, uh, in New York. In New York, the you've got a, a strong Puerto Rican uh, culture there that's keeping this alive. Uh, in, uh, in Florida, you've got the Cuban culture that keeps the botanicas alive. So, yes, it's, it's here and, and, it, and it's growing. Um, and... And students want to know more about it. They remember what their grandmothers did or, or their aunts. And, and this is why I think my courses have become quite popular.